seen God is Savior. Let's look at interview method. When we use alternative research methods, we can use interview method of data collection and we can collect primary data using interview method or if there were interviews conducted, we can use them as secondary data. And this data can become the raw material for various research methods under the alternative approach. There are three ways of conducting interviews. One is the structured approach, the second is the semi-structured, and third is the unstructured. They differ uh, on number of attributes, the research problem, uh, for example, if you take structured, and if you know a lot about the research problem, and the purpose is to obtain in-depth information and to test uh, the uh, a theory qualitatively, um, and uh, we can use structured approach. Sampling in, uh, is purposive because we want to test the theory qualitatively here, and the sample size could vary, but with a mean of 30 and could range from 12 to 60, but it depends on the study. The questions are close-ended because it is structured. On the other hand, the semi-structured, uh, the research problem is somewhat known and we need to obtain in-depth information, uh, uh, usually conducted to conform to theory. Um, and the sampling again is purposive, and the sampling size is, uh, is uh, with a mean of 30, and the questions are selected questions, and they are open-ended. So we use kind of a funneling technique where uh, the, the selected questions are asked, and from that we ask uh, probing uh, questions relating to that selected uh, question. Unstructured uh, approach is where uh, little is known about the research problem. And the purpose is to obtain more in-depth information and uh, uh, it's to build a theory. Uh, and the sampling, because we know little about it, we use snow snowballing. Uh, that is, uh, we try to find uh, who knows about it, and then from from that we get another lead, and so forth. Again, the mean could vary. Um, we um, the mean is about thirty, uh, but it depends on the uh, the study how many uh, how many we could interview, and the questions in the unstructured are open ended and ad hoc because little is known about the research problem. So when we conduct uh, when we conduct uh, interviews to collect data, uh, we have to look at the big picture. So this motivation, why we conduct uh, a study, and there's a research problem, and that uh, research problem is being informed by a theory from a general understanding. And then there's research methods that we would apply uh, to analyze uh, data. So the data comes from uh, various sources. Uh, the, the data collection method uh, for qualitative studies could be interviews and observations. Uh, here we are looking at interviews uh, and they can uh, generate primary data. Uh, whereas the, there are other data collection methods uh, where we can use uh, uh, databases and uh, documents, literature and so forth, and use different research methods uh, uh, to collect, uh, to analyze those data. And then once with the research methods and the data that we have collected, for example, from interviews, uh, we will interpret uh, the data. And based on those interpretation, we provide a solution. And based on that solution, we uh, uh, make a, a contribution, an impact.
Let's look at how we can apply this to a study, a study that has, uh, has been conducted. In this study, uh, they looked at, uh, I looked at uh, how firms disclose and not disclose the structural intangibles. Um, the motivation here was that uh, people uncritically accept that companies disclose intangibles in a neutral way. Uh, but, uh, but is it, uh, is, is it, is it correct? Uh, given that uh, companies are there to legitimize uh, to the society and to various stakeholders the activities. So the research problem I came up with was that why did firms disclose uh, or not disclose? Uh, sometimes they disclose, uh, others they don't disclose structural intangibles to various stakeholders. I identified three interest groups here, social, political, and economic, and what result of it. And I use the political economic theory. In that, there's a strand called neoclassical strand. And in, in, in that strand of the political economic theory, it argues that companies uh, exchange, they are in exchange with stakeholders. So here they are exchanging disclosures for legitimacy with uh, three classes, uh, three classes of stakeholders, that's the government, society, and investors. So what I did was I conducted um, for data collection, I use interviews. Uh, there were 20, 22 interviews conducted with 11 companies and I interviewed marketing director and finance director of each company and, um, uh, and, and, and these companies come from different uh, industry memberships uh, because there could be variations among industry sectors. And um, what I did was once I collected this data, I used the research method uh, thematic analysis, and then I I analyze uh, the the interview data and, and classify them into into the the three themes: that's the society, investors, and government. So that's what I did in in the interpretation: classify the interview data into structural classes, and and uh, and then my research findings were I found that uh, behind these companies disclosing and also not disclosing intangibles, there were three contextual factors which were influencing and 14 motivational factors and five agendas uh, that, were, that were behind this. And my, the contribution that I, was, I, I made here was I said that the stakeholders rely on companies uh, what to, to voluntarily disclose intangibles uh, because uh, uh, there are intangibles are uh, not captured in financial statements, many of the intangibles, so uh, stakeholders depend on uh, companies, but it's not a neutral activity. And what I suggested here was that, uh, that there should be minimum guidelines in place. Just to give you an idea of what I did with the interview data is that I had these two theories. One was the legitimacy theory. The other one was the uh, political economy theory. And in the legitimacy theory, uh, there were two aspects. One was that companies were legitimizing, uh, they, they were using uh, to legitimize their activities. They were also using uh, their disclosure to manage impressions. So, uh, so I uh, to manage impressions, so to legitimize and manage impression for social, political, and economic uh, stakeholders. So, uh, what I found was there were two theories, uh, and and I connected these two theories by the thematic analysis, and for that analysis, the basic data, the ingredients came from. So that's how we do it.